One man known as a pandemic expert is speaking out. He wrote an op-ed for USA Today calling for a five-week immediate lockdown of the United States. He says it's essential to protect the country both economically and medically. He's MIT trained. He's a physicist. Yanir Baryam is joining us this morning from Boston uh, to explain his take and why he felt like this was a crucial message. So thank you so much. Uh, for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Obviously, we've, we rarely get to speak to an expert of your caliber. Uh, so tell us why nice. five weeks would make a difference and put it into terms that, you know, those of us who don't have an MIT education can comprehend. Sure. The, the really key thing to understand is that when you have an exponentially growing outbreak, something that's growing rapid and really more and more rapidly, um, the longer you wait, the worse it is. In fact, the situation that we see, the cases that we know about, are the tip of the iceberg compared to what really exists at any one time. So if we act according to what's happening we see now, we're always behind because it's really the week from now that we have to respond to. And that's 10 times as bad. So remember a week ago, there wasn't endless anything. And now all of a sudden life seems different. Well, a week from now, it will be much worse. And we have to act now as if, right, because that's the reality, the situation is what's going to be a week from now that we'll know about then. So today, the situation is really worse than you know. And if you overreact now, you'll actually get ahead of it. And then you'll be able to stop it. We're and the reason we can stop, go ahead, yeah. Ask oh, I'm questions. sorry. I, I just, we're obviously, most of us are using as a reference point watching what's gone on, say, in, in Spain, in Italy, and first in China. Which models are you looking at? Which behaviors most sort of foreshadow what's going to happen here in the United States to you? So China had 800 cases when they locked down the entire country, you know, half of the country of China, not the entire one because it was mostly in one area. But remember, China has 1.4 billion people. We have a quarter as many in the entire United States. And the point is that once they locked down with 800 people that were confirmed sick, they ended up with 80,000 cases and they sent 42,000 healthcare workers from across China to help with the outbreak. So the key to stopping this, and by the way, they stopped it after five to six weeks, five weeks surely in the rest of China and six weeks in the core area where the main outbreak was. So the key to being successful is to act soon, immediately, and take the strongest action possible, which is a complete lockdown. And once you do that, the advantage of that is that we get ahead of it and in five, six weeks, we're done. And then we can go back to uh, uh, work towards going back. It'll take still a few weeks going back to normal. And that's really the huge advantage. Otherwise, it's constantly ahead of you, constantly ahead of you, constantly ahead of you. And you end up flooded hospitals. And, uh, and even the supply of things is threatened. And that's why people are panicking. So the fact that they're panicking is not wrong. But if you act now, then all of the motivation for panicking is not there because we'll be able to overcome the disease and stop it. What do you advise for healthcare workers and for those who are showing up to the hospitals every day? I mean, the, the, the grim expectations of how overrun they're going to be, and we're not really even talking so much about how many might be taken out of their jobs because they become infected by the virus as well. Yeah, the, the challenge now is in two different directions. One is to make sure that it doesn't get worse. And now there's the, even what we have now is going to get very bad. And we have to stop it from getting worse by taking the full step of a lockdown. Having done that, now we have to do our best to help healthcare workers. And, and that's to reduce the transmission. So even people within families should avoid too much contact because 80% of transmission is within families. And we have to protect healthcare workers as much as possible by giving them the right equipment and helping them out in as many ways as possible. And sometimes that may even mean having them stay away from their families so that they don't communicate the disease to their families if they get infected. And some of that may mean uh, people who work in old age homes, in, in retirement communities, in a rehabilitation or in nursing homes, 
also not being in contact with anybody else because they will transmit the disease into those facilities and lead to a contagion which will be devastating. So there are lots of different things that one can do, but the main thing is to realize that if we go all out, we will be able to stop it. But there's nothing that we know that can stop this disease, nothing that we know that will enable us to bring it to a halt or to mitigate the tremendous medical disaster except for going all out. And everybody has to take it seriously. It's not just government. The government can declare a lockout, lockdown. They did in Italy, but the people didn't take it seriously enough and it ended up being growing exponentially again. So we learn from this that we absolutely have to go all out and everybody has to participate in order to defeat this disease. It's really a very severe problem and we have to work on it together. Yanir Varyam, thank you so much for your uh, expert perspective as a pandemic expert. Sadly, uh, we really do need this insight and let's hope um, that your a very serious uh, warning will resonate with uh, all of our uh, families at home. We appreciate your time this morning from Boston. Thank, thank you, you very much and be well. You too.